name is Ankur Shah. And first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming here tonight. I know some of you have finals next week, and you might be busy, but I really appreciate your time. So just this morning, I was hosting an alien tourist who revisited the Earth after 500 years. And after seeing the current state of our planet, he just asked me one question. Who's the manager here? Now, jokes apart, many of you may be aware of the environmental issues which we face today. And they are uh, climate change, Arctic ice melting, deforestation, land pollution, water pollution. But tonight, we're going to talk trash. I mean, plastic trash. <laughs> so plastics are something we use almost every single day. We eat from plastic, drink from plastic, sometimes wear it. Even credit cards are made out of plastic. So why, why are we addicted to plastic? Let's ask ourselves why we need plastic so much in the first place. So can anyone give me one good reason why we use plastic so much? So less expensive. It's versatile. Exactly, it is versatile. That's a very good reason. It can be molded into many shapes, sizes. It's a very good reason. Anyone else? It's cheap. It's cheap. Yes, it is cheap. It costs less money. So plastic addiction. Firstly, it is inexpensive. It's cheap, as my friend said. It's convenient to use and easily disposable. It's virtually indestructible, which means it does not rot, rust, or corrode. It's resistant to most liquids we use on a day-to-day -day basis, and as my friend said, it can be molded into any shape, size, color, and be weighted in hardness. So just to look at the world's global plastic production, in about over 60 years, the global plastic production has increased from 1 million tons to approximately 300 million tons. And this rate is increasing at an exponential pace. So okay, what's wrong with plastic? What's the problem with using plastic? It takes a very, very long time to decompose. And by very long time, I mean around several human lifetimes. It's estimated that a single plastic water bottle can take up to 500 years to decompose naturally. Before plastic even decomposes, it leaves a deadly trail in our environment and enters the food chain. When plastic gets broken down, it just forms smaller pieces of itself, which means smaller and smaller plastics. And they are hard to see, even harder to clean up, and can be easily ingested by fish or any other marine creature. So that's an image of plastic in the water. And here are the smaller plastics I was talking about. Now let's come to the problem. Who has heard of the term, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Excellent. Anyone else? Great. Can you tell me what it is? Right, it's a huge patch of garbage, exactly. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the world's largest garbage dump. It spans waters in the Pacific Ocean from the west coast of North America to the east coast of Japan. Imagine that size. And it's not only the ocean, only garbage patch in the ocean. There are others in the Indian Ocean, Southern Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean. So this is just a picture of the uh, beach in Hawaii. It's called Camilo Beach or Camilo Beach. And uh, at this point, I'd like to show a short video on how the Pacific Ocean garbage patch was formed. Quick, where is the world's biggest garbage dump? Did you say in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? Well, that's the right answer. It turns out that there's something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And they call it that because it is an enormous amount of trash floating in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So the name works. See, the rotation of the Earth and some of the global winds form what are called gyres. 
These are massive rotating ocean currents found around the world, but the bulk of the world's trash ends up in the North Pacific Gyre, which is home to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Now the GP squared, that's what I'm going to call it from now on, okay, is actually two smaller garbage patches. There's one between Japan and Hawaii, and there's another bigger one the size of Texas between Hawaii and California. And they're considered one large garbage patch because there's a 6,000 mile subtropical convergence zone that connects the two and acts like basically a highway of trash. Isn't that delightful sounding? Now who knows how long this thing has been there, but in 1997, a racing boat captain named Charles Moore, who very much likely wears ascots all the time, found the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And a lot of people say that the amount of trash there is inestimable. While we don't know exactly how much it is, the good people in Hawaii can tell you it's a lot. There are some beaches in America's most beautiful state that have trash piled 10 feet deep. That's a lot of trash, and it's coming from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Now, 80% of all ocean-going trash is plastic, which doesn't quite make sense because while we use 200 billion pounds of plastic a year, just 10% of it ends up in the ocean. So why is so much ocean-going trash plastic? Well, that's because plastic takes so long to break down. Researchers estimate it takes about 500 years for plastic to degrade, and it doesn't biodegrade, which means it would break down into its original components, instead it photodegrades, which means that exposure to the sun breaks the plastic down into smaller and smaller versions of its original self. These smaller and smaller versions out in the ocean are called nurdles, or mermaid tears. And despite their astoundingly cute names, they're actually of a very insidious nature. That's because nurdles not only contain the original chemicals used to make the plastic, they also have the terrible capability of attracting other pollutants in the ocean, like oil slicks, and condensing and concentrating it, turning nurdles into toxic powerhouses. And then even worse, nurdles are eaten by sea life. That's because these little nurdles floating in places like the Great Pacific Garbage Patch co-mingle with phytoplankton, tiny organisms that are supposed to be there. And sea animals eat phytoplankton, and when they do, they can't help but also ingest some of the nurdles, which means they've entered the food chain, which is not good. When a larger animal eats the animal that ate the nurdle, it also ingests the chemicals, and so on and so on, up the food chain, which very frequently ends with you, the human grocery shopper at the seafood case. So what do we do about all this? Well, it turns out that cleaning up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and other gyres isn't much of an option. It would take 67 trawlers a full year just to clean up 1% of the GP squared. Instead, the better alternative is to control the plastics on land that end up as ocean-going trash. We can find alternatives to plastic that actually biodegrade. We can expand plastic recycling programs to include more types of plastic. And of course, there's reducing and reusing the amount of plastic. So where do you stand on ocean-going trash? Are you for it? Are you against it? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe. And for more great stuff, go to brainstuffshow.com. Okay, so this is just a picture of how the Great Pacific Ocean garbage patch was is formed. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. So how does it end up in the ocean in the first place? 80%, as the video guy said, 80% of the trash and debris comes from urban runoff, which means land-based sources. And how does it come from land-based sources? Trash on the streets either gets blown by the wind or gets washed out during rain, ends up in the sewers and finds its way into the ocean. And lastly, ocean-based sources, which means discharges from ships, and abandoned fishing gear make up for the other 20%. So this is just a glimpse, a tip of the iceberg of the trash that washes up every year on the shores of Midway Islands. By the way, Midway Islands is right in the middle of the garbage patch. So recent tragedies. In 2014, a sci whale was found dead in the Chesapeake Bay, and the cause of death was a broken plastic DVD case in its stomach. Researchers found that 90% of dead seabirds had ingested plastic. 
In 2013, a sperm whale washed upon Spain's southern coast. Its stomach contained nearly 40 pounds of plastic waste. And scientists have estimated that nearly 25% of the fish have ingested some form of plastic. This means the next time you eat a fish, there are one in four chances that it had plastic in it. So effects on seaboards. Now the main two types of seaboards affected by plastic are albatrosses and fulmars. By the way, this is not photoshopped. There are videos of albatross dissection and plastic coming out of it. So albatrosses and fulmars are usually surface feeders, which means they dip their bills into the water and gain their food. But in the process, plastic also enters their mouth, which they also mistakenly believe to be food. Nearly 70% of the world's population of albatross live on the Midway Islands. And as you can see in the image above, uh, plastic bottle caps, cigarette lighters, and so much other trash is inside their stomachs. Here are more examples of marine life being devastated by plastic. plastic. Sea lion being entangled by fishing gear, a puffin, which is barely recognizable because of the plastic covering it. This turtle, when it was a baby, plastic beverage cup holder uh, captured its shell and its shell got distorted when it grew. And the list keeps going on. So let's concentrate on microplastics. Who can tell me what microplastics are? Okay, good. Exactly, small plastics. As the name suggests, micro, they are really small plastics. They are plastics which are one millimeter and smaller. And they are found in so many products like cosmetics, body scrubs, hand soaps, synthetic clothing, and they are also used in industrial processes. Now you might have come across such a hand soap in the supermarket, and you've seen such suspended particles. Companies call them exfoliants, but they are actually microplastics. Now when you wash your body with this soap, the microplastic does clean your body a bit more, maybe. But it does not dissolve in the water. So it enters the drains and eventually ends up in the ocean. And these microplastics are very easy for fish to swallow. And then they enter the food chain. This is a toothpaste which uses microplastics. Now we adults gargle out the toothpaste and we know it's, it's not uh, to be swallowed. But what if a child uses this toothpaste? He or she might accidentally swallow it and these microplastics can be fatal in large concentrations. The good news is US and Canada governments are planning to phase out microplastics in products but until then we need to be smart in what we buy. Now let's come to solutions. The decisions you will make now will be for the future generations. Your actions will determine the future of Earth. You've seen this a million times. Reuse, reduce, recycle. It's really the only way to prevent plastic from entering the ocean. So these are seven different types of plastics, and I brought a few plastic items with me. If you just pass it. Adi, give those two plates. Six, number six. All right. Seven different types of plastics, and each of them is categorized by its density. One being of the highest density. Now plastic type 1, also called PET, this is what bottles are made out of. And at least in Huntsville, this is what is recycled most, the most. So recycling, it's really the easiest way to ensure that the plastic we dis dispose will be used again for manufacturing new products. By the way, I handed you those items so you can see on the bottom. Most of you may be knowing this, but there will be a triangle saying the type of plastic. So this is how you determine whether it can be recycled or not. So recycling is really the easiest and 
arguably the laziest way to ensure that our plastic waste will be reused. And out of curiosity, I visited the nearby factory called Custom Polymers and found out that plastic types 1, PET, is recycled a lot. And uh, it, the good thing about recycling, as you, uh, the movie kind of said, it downcycles, but PET does not downcycle. You can recycle PET or bottles any number of times you want. But while recycling is a great way to reduce waste, it should not be the only method. But it does prove that waste is only wasted resources. What is trash to us is a treasure to recyclers. So some straight and hard facts. Only about one in five plastic bottles get recycled in USA. In 2013, we generated about 254 million tons of trash and recycled and composted about 87 million tons. So the rest was disposed and they are either in landfills or in the oceans. And this is good news, but it's, it's supposed to be more, 34.3% recycling rate. The annual consumption of bottles only in USA is about 50 billion plastic bottles, 50 billion. That's seven times the human population of the world. So 50 billion plastic bottles, and this rate is also growing every year. Now I included this slide because this is what the Green Club does. I was sad to see litter in the pond, in our beautiful pond, which is teeming with marine life. It has fishes, turtles, even ducks call it their home. So after a stormy day, I took this picture, and it's of a lot of trash floating. But after three days, we clean it up, and you can see the clean image. Now I know that most of you will not throw trash directly into the pond. You consider it immoral, and that's good. But how did it end up there? Again, trash on the streets either gets blown by wind, or rain washes it into the sewers. And this is, this is exactly how it goes into the ocean. From the pond, the waters finally go into the ocean. But since this was just after the storm, the trash was still there. And by the way, if the weather is good tomorrow, the next pond cleanup is at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Meet opposite Shelby Center if you are interested. So this is a very sad image of a turtle with a straw inside one of its nostrils. And when Earthwatch researchers found this turtle, it was really suffocating. Now the cause of this is basically ignorance and it's not our intentions to do this but it's happening because plastic flows into the ocean as I said. We are unintentionally and unknowingly harming so many marine creatures. This sort of was fortunate enough to be discovered by the researchers but there are so many others who are not so lucky enough. So plastic trash on the streets do we just look at it and say, oh, that's bad, that's dirty, it's not my responsibility to clean it? It's not hard to pick up trash. I do it all the time when I'm walking. When you see trash on the streets that can be recycled or reused, at least plastic trash on the streets, please pick it up and dispose of it appropriately. You can recycle it or simply throw it in a trash can. At least you know that it doesn't end up in the ocean. And as you know, this is an act of prevention and you will indirectly save the lives of many marine creatures. Steps we can take. Now these, these are just two steps every one of us can take from now. So first of all, bring your own bottle or any sort of container instead of buying plastic bottles. Believe me, you will save a lot of money and also save the environment. For instance, I've got this cool metal bottle. People actually praise me for this, <laughs> saying it's a cool bottle. Wow, where did you get that? So let's get a let's discuss a hypothetical situation. You buy a plastic water bottle every day of the year. For simplicity, let's see, let's consider the cost of one water bottle as one dollar. So every year you're spending about $365 just on plastic water bottles. Instead of that, why not use your own bottle and fill water for free every day? 
And those of you on, at UAH know that these filters exist all, all around campus. So why not use that to fill your water instead of buying plastic water bottles? It doesn't make sense. Secondly, use a reusable cloth bag for grocery shopping. For example, I have this bag I bought from Walmart. It just costs 50 cents. One single bag can save up to five plastic bags. It contains that much water. So if you buy two or three of these and use it every time you go shopping, you'll save a ton of plastic bags. And by the way, if I invert a plastic bag like this, if I put it upside down, can anyone tell me what kind of creature or what animal does it look like? Crocodile. Yes. yes, jellyfish, exactly. It looks like a jellyfish. So, do you know which animal eats jellyfish? Uh, turtles, endangered species of turtles actually eat jellyfish. So when plastic bags are in the ocean, turtles actually mistake them for jellyfish and eat it. And finally they choke on that plastic. So it's, it's a really good option to convert to cloth bags and use it for many years instead of just using a plastic bag for 20, 10 to 20 minutes. Finally, I cannot change you, there's only one person and that's you. The choice is ours. Do we want to leave this legacy behind for our future generations? Or work towards a cleaner world? I'll just end by saying, quoting, I'll just end by quoting Chief Seattle. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Thank you.